So nothing really jumps out quite yet. The only thing that caught my eye here was Amazing Spider-Man 33. Now, there's a couple things with this book. Really classic, iconic cover. But here's the other thing, white pages. Now, I do, I understand that the pages inside are not presentable in the slab, but if you can't get a 9.8 white pages of a Silver Age book, you can at least get the white pages. And that's what I kind of look at with some of these, is I'm looking for other presentation in the book, regardless of the giant number at the top. So even though this is a 5.5, so there's no real significant um, miswrapping, right? The, the wrapping on the book is pretty good. Um, yes, the back has a bit of tanning on it. This is a very, very presentable book. The colors look good, the water, there's really not any giant scratches or stamps or writing on the front. Like I would be very, very proud to display this on my wall. So let's use this as an example of going through and how I would prepare to bid on a book like this. So a 5.5 right there smack in the mid grade range. But in this case, just using this as an example, I'd like to bid on it. So what are your steps here? Your options are just to jump in and just give it a random bid. Um, you know, it looks like the current bid is a dollar. Most likely if you bid 50 bucks or hundred, you might be the, the high bidder, but the way it works with Heritage, the, the real bidding actually takes place live. Um, and so what you wanna do is you want to have your data prepared ahead of time so that you can get in there and not spend uh, too much money. So you don't wanna overspend, go beyond your budget. But also, is there a way that you can actually snipe these books? And, yeah, I'm talking about sniping Silver Age Marvel off of Heritage. I know it sounds crazy, but you'll see here in a moment when we start running the data, is I'm able to look and get books for, you know, I target somewhere around 40 to 55% of GPA on raw. And, you know, I'll, I'll move up from there depending on the book. Um, again, like if this was miswrapped, I probably would just put in my minimum bid and then stay away from it and just track the data. So let's look. So the first thing I would want to do is before I start getting into putting in a lot of data entry, what does this book even go for in a 5.5? So we're looking at Amazing Spider-Man 30. So I come back to Go Collect and Amazing Spider-Man 30 in a 5.5. Average sale, $270. Last sold on Heritage a month ago for 228 which is really not a bad price according to GoCollect. So I'm gonna leave that there. Now I'm gonna to go to cover price. Now, why am I going to cover price when I've uh, talked about how I use this for RAWs? Well, it's exactly that. Do I want to overpay just because it has the, the CGC slab? So in here, the raw comic average sales, $111 according to cover price. So we're looking at 111 to 228 if it's slabbed. The next thing I'll do is I'll go into GPA. Blow this up a little bit. So 5.5 in GPA has an average, let me go back to the column header. So you've got, um, I really don't bother with 2019 and 2020 as we know the comment market is much different now. The 12 month average, the 90 day average and the last sale. So it's the last three columns. Um, I really, really look at the 90 day average and compare that to the other two to kind of, for me, decide on what is the, the going rate. For, so if we scroll back down in the 5.5, the 90 day average is 276, last sold for 228, that is that heritage sale. And then the 12 month is 230. So somewhere in that 230 to 276 range is what I'm looking for. Now, when I look at this and I see the book is increasing in value, look at how steady this is. This is why I target these. So this to me is in my price range, right? So a 5.5, somewhere between 200 to $300 is around what I would be willing to consider paying. Now, obviously I wanna pay less, I get that. And that's fine. So one of the things that you have to do with Heritage is you have to know uh, when to let a book go. You can't just keep bidding because like I've said before online, there's no shortage of comic books. Um, you could tell me that there's a, a, a new release with a print run of 400 and this is one of 400 and it costs a thousand dollars. It's worth a thousand dollars. I get that, but there are other comic books. So you have to know when to get up and just pass on something. 5.5 in my price range, uh, iconic cover. You see the jump here between a 5.5 and a 6. Is it worth it to spend twice as much money to get a 6.0 in a fine? I don't think so, especially with this one being as presentable as it is. Right? Um, and then you also have the 6.5 as a 340, um, and, and obviously it's gonna go up from there. 
But a 5.5, uh, let's look. Let me go back and see what a 5 is. A 5 is in the low 200s, and then you get a 4 down here below 200. I would say even a 4.5, depending on the presentation again. But I'm willing to pay a little bit more because of the presentation. on. But this is a book I want to track. So how do I track it? So I go into my spreadsheet, and I'm going to start a new section. And what I do is I copy description down here. I just take this description, and why do I do, do that? Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Heritage consistently lists their information. So even though you see at the top, this is the entire description, um, I can quickly see this is Spider-Man 33, just like you could see above from the last auction I tracked all the different X-Men that I was targeting. Then I copy the URL and paste it, and watch this value here. You see it says 14,100 as I paste this, it changes. So I have in my formula a way that it parses the URL to pull out the uh, the lot number. So if we scroll back here, you'll see it says lot 11074. That's automatically put in there when I paste the URL. Why is that important? Because when you're bidding live and it says we're, we're about to bid on, they don't say we're about to bid on Amazing Spider-Man 33. It says we're about to bid on lot 11,074. So you can kind of see in numerical order where the auction is. So if you're targeting a run of Amazing Spider-Man or Fantastic Four, Daredevil, X-Men, whatever the case may be, whatever the title it is that you're targeting, um, it's not going to be alphabetic. It's going to be by that lot number. So that's an important uh, indicator, a unique ID for the auction. Um, the grade I will put in by hand. I believe we said we were looking at a 5.5. And then I distinguish between raw and CGC. Now, why is this important? Because all of these values in here are driven by different things. Based on what I put in here, it's going to alter these uh, these values, these targets, and, and different things. And I'll explain each column here as I go. So you can see raw. So if you watch the other uh, values in the row, if I change it to CGC, they increase. Now, why is that? Because I'm going off of GPA in column N, and it's the GPA price at the moment that as I look at it as the value. And uh, I will go ahead and just put that in here so we can see uh, relative numbers to this book. So on a 5.5, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's 276. Now, why did I choose that over the 228 or 230? To me, I'm willing to put in the fact that it had a higher 90-day moving average because the book itself on Heritage was in a, in a, I would say, above acceptable presentation state, meaning there was no miswrap, there was no other thing with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and agree with that 276. I could middle it and say somewhere between 230 and 276 and just put 250 but again trying to keep things consistent i will more often use that 90 day average um, unless there isn't one so down here you see with the 4.0 there's no 90 day average and then i see here's 184 for the 12 month and here's 200 for the recent sale a lot of times i'll just take that 200. i try and lean on the higher value instead of the lesser just because my experience with Heritage, it has a particular type of collector and bidder, um, they're leaning towards the higher value anyway. They're expecting a higher value and expecting you know, a higher return. So in order to be fair and consistent, I use the higher value. So that's $276. So back in the spreadsheet, I'm gonna plug in 276. You can see those numbers adjust. And then I'm also gonna add uh, the W designation under pages. So. Again, these numbers are going to change as soon as I type W into this field. And to me, this again is a premium. These are these hidden things in the book that, uh, in, in, the, in the collectible, I should say, more than the book itself. As a collectible, it's about presentation, uh, the look of it, uh, the, the, again, the significance. And white pages is, it, it, is it's the highest uh, designation for page quality that CGC uh, allows for. If it's not white, if it's off-white, then I just leave the numbers as they are. But because it is, you'll notice these change again and it will go up slightly and it's all percentage based. It's all driven off of column N and the GPA. Now, some of these other values are driven off of trends and based on what happened in previous auction, I basically predict what the bid's going to end up at. So I'm predicting that the, the raw base bid without the buyer's premium is gonna be $212.38. So as I plug in these numbers and, and look at my formulas, you know, again, if I'm going to treat myself to a, a mid-grade Silver Age book, um, 
$212 for Amazing Spider-Man 33, the last sold for $228. If that's what it's predicting, I'm going to track this book. Uh, I, I'm going to try and seek it out. Again, once the auction begins and you start seeing the bid go over 200 and it's going into 250, 260, 270 range, I back out. I just get out of it. I'm only looking to win at an auction at a price that's reasonable for me. Obviously, we all want to buy low, sell high, or get, get a good deal. That's sort of part of what makes us comic book collectors. But I'm trying to pay a reasonable price. Now, with the, you have to be careful because column M is actually what you're paying to Heritage, right? So 212 on a bid means you're actually paying $254.86. However, it's still less than GPA. Again, if you're if you're telling yourself, well, I don't think 276 was the right value, you can certainly change it to 228, but watch what happens when the book sells for over 200. Let me explain the other columns and then I'll put in some other data uh, as we go along just to kind of give you a kind of an idea of why I may or may not target a book and what are my next steps at Heritage. So the, <clears throat> the first thing is column G is what I would call a pre-bid. And what I mean by that is it's the, it's when bidding opens up at Heritage, you're able to quote unquote bid on a book, but really the bidding doesn't start until the item is put up for auction live on Sunday or Monday. But you can go ahead and put something in there um, to get your bid in early, almost unless you're going to bid like 300 off the bat, you're not going to win this item for $74.61. I can guarantee you that. But what I like to do is put it into Heritage because it adds that book as a book that I'm tracking, a book that I bid on. And so I'll get updates throughout the week as far as, you know, is my $74 bid holding up? Um, how many bids are, are on the book? And some people might say that's a waste of time because um, you're going to you know, drive up the price on a, on a book that you have. I can understand that point of view, but I'm telling you, it's, it doesn't really matter because it's going to go up above $74 anyway. And then you'd say, well, why don't you just bid 212 because that's what you think it's going to go for. To me, that is inflating the price. So you want to have something uh, reasonable, just some entry level bid, and that lets you and Heritage know that you're interested in the book. And then it adds to your tracking. So there's a whole bunch of books that um, you know, you're, you're tracking and you can see them all at a glance. So that's what this does. It's, it's like a track item, so to speak. Column H is my bid target. I would love nothing more than to get that book for $186.51. To me, that would be ideal. And what I have found is that when I track the books this way and I go through and track maybe somewhere between 20 and 50 books uh, per week, that I'm able to win about one auction. And when I win, it is close to my target. But the trick is spending the time and spending the research uh, and, and putting in the work to get it to, um, to, to win that auction, to find that auction. You're not gonna get it just going to heritage auctions and say, I'll just wing it and, and I'll just have GPA open off to the side. You're gonna end up overpaying for books and so on. Again, that's with the, the buyer's premium of a 223.82. So that's all calculated here in my formula. So I can see even at $186, that's not exactly what I'm spending. It does not include shipping. So you do have to be careful in that regard. But still, if you're comparing H and I to N in the columns, it's still below the GPA. It's still below that 90 day average. Now, column J, extremely important. I've colored it red. This is the amount that you have to be careful of because if you bid more than $242.88 with the buyer's premium, you're actually going above GPA. Now, I have other examples above where the bid max is under GPA, like well under GPA. Well, why is that? It's because the book is raw or it's the book is CGC, but not white pages. Because it's CGC slab and it's a white page designation, I'm allowing for that maximum to creep up a little bit and allow for the buyer's premium to go over. Now, this would be a rare case where I'm really, really after a particular book and I'm willing to pay for it and I want it even if I'm overpaying slightly, but I even now have to set my limitations and understand what I'm getting myself into. So I like to have the, what I would call the minimum, which is column G, the maximum column J, and then somewhere in the middle is my target and then what I'm actually predicting. So really for me, the range would be 186 to 212. That's kind of the range that I'm living in in terms of the, again, the raw bid without the buyer's premium. And those, that's, that's my target range. And I would feel very, very comfortable 
owning this book having paid somewhere between 186 and 212. So that's what I do in terms of modeling the numbers. If you're interested in more information, you really wanna see what are these formulas like, leave some comments and, and give me some feedback. Let me know that you're interested in, in this types of data and analysis and I can show you how I run the numbers.